we literally can't leave. So all the people that are like, they're holding you against their will, they are. Welcome back to Behind the Edit, your go-to podcast for unpacking the actual reality behind reality TV. I'm Lachlan Gurdon. And I'm Talia Pritchard. And Lachlan, how are you feeling after retreat week? I am feeling emotionally exhausted. (laughs) There was a lot to unpack. I feel like every couple had their own scandal going on. We get into it all with today's guest, Alyssa Barmond from season 10 last year. You may remember that she has a child. She does have a child and she is a great baker because she just gave us some treats. (laughs) We loved having Alyssa in. Not only did she bring us treats, but she also brought plenty of tea about how the producers might manipulate certain storylines and contestants. Yeah, I actually really, really loved our chat with her. But before we go into it, I want to hear your thumbs up for the week that was. I feel like we saw a few toxic dynamics on the show, (laughs) on the retreat. (laughs) What? But it's unusual. But the highlight for me was seeing Timothy and Tristan's relationship shine. They've got such a great friendship. And the fact that Timothy decided to buy him a matching jumper to celebrate that they were in Byron Bay together. I thought it was just really refreshing that we actually saw a male friendship that wasn't about the drama, wasn't about talking negatively about their partners. It was really wholesome to see. They're just really there for each other. And I think maybe is this like the most wholesome, strongest relationship we've ever seen on this show? (laughs) At least on this season so far. On this season, definitely. What was your thumbs up? My thumbs up of the week was actually Timothy just in general. I think he had a really good week. I think it's a... um, probably a testament to retreat week when you take people out of the sky suites and the everyday filming schedule they can kind of form new friendships or show more of their true character and we saw him bond with well with Tristan but also with some of the girls I love that Timothy was part of like spilling the tea with Lauren and Sarah like he seems very protective over Tori and her relationship with Jack he had the breakthrough with Lucinda he was very vulnerable on camera and we don't often see men and particularly men of that age bracket too I would say really open up about their feelings and kind of like do it in a way where it is open, it is raw, it is vulnerable, and it's also then not shying away from trying to make excuses for crying or being like that on TV. Like he just kind of embraced it as well as he could, I think. And we saw a really softer side yeah. to him too. I totally agree. And thumbs down for retreat week. This happened before the retreat even started. We saw Stephen and Michael discuss a cheating scandal that happened in their relationship. Yeah. When they were filming the publicity shoot for the show, Stephen was floating with his hairdresser, I guess is what they used. And Michael was clearly upset that he had a romantic spark with someone that wasn't him. I'm going to give this a thumbs down. Obviously, the cheating is bad. I think it's great that Stephen acknowledged is it, cheating? it. Well, that's the thing where... He's found that he had a spark with someone else. I think the cheating element came from getting his number and Mm. continuing the conversation outside of the brief exchange. The problem that I thought was that they clearly didn't have a spark. Stephen acknowledged it and brought up the issue because he thought, hey, I've got a spark with someone else. This is why we're not working. But the fact that they then went on the retreat, they decided to continue in the experiment. I'm a bit sick of couples that aren't working out but stay on the show, maybe for airtime. I get that you want to go through the entire maths experience and the retreat is part of that, (laughs) but just leave if it's not working. They wanted a free holiday to Byron Bay. There is just no other, like surely they'll leave at this week's commitment ceremony. Surely. I thought, yeah, like, I don't know. There's a lot of cheating sagas this week in general, right? Which kind of goes into my thumbs down. Okay. The definition of cheating this week has become very um, convoluted, I would say. And it's been brought up like there was a Stephen and Michael journey. And then there was also... Jaden and Eden bringing up the Sarah stuff, which we delve into really soon. My thumbs down goes to Jaden this week because I thought he was a bit morally superior when he was talking about this stuff with Sarah At and the Tim. Party. Okay. Yeah, and kind of when he's like, we have to be the ones that like bring justice into this situation it's like it's actually got nothing to do with you I don't know if you know the full story and his whole like she's cheated on Tim it's like again you don't know the context and I feel like just a few short weeks ago Jaden was telling us one of the most like horrific confessions of all time yeah and then all of a sudden he's like morally superior because he and Eden have both been cheated on so they're the ones that need to like make the situation right. I just, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. We saw that last week as well, where he was trying to be the voice of reason in Timothy and Lucinda's relationship. I don't know why he's taking on this role. Yeah. 
But it's just like pipe down, Chachi. Like <laughs> <laughs> this is not your place. Just sit back with your wine and enjoy the dinner party. Well, we unpacked all of Sarah's cheating scandal with Alyssa. Let's just get straight into it. Welcome, Alyssa. Thank, Thank you for coming you. in. Thanks for having me, guys. It's been a long time in the making. Definitely. We're so glad you finally came into Yahoo. Thank you. I feel like that you are the perfect guest to unpack the retreat week. Yes. The retreat was my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to make you relive something. Triggered. You I was triggered. <laughs> PTSD, but it's fine. It's good to deal with your trauma, like yes. face it front on. So that's what I'm doing. It's healthy to talk about it. Totally. Exactly. How did you feel watching this week's episodes though? Look, I was a bit jealous that they went to Byron Bay and like this amazing mansion. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, but I was a little bit, not triggered, but oh, it's just, there was a lot. There yep. was a lot that happened. I'm kind of curious because on retreat week, it looks like everyone's living their best lives. Yeah. Is the filming process different to doing the regular kind of episodes? I feel like it's a little bit more full on. So in the regular episodes, they come in, they wake you up and then they say, okay, we're going to film wake ups. And then you have to pretend like you're going back to bed. <laughs> Even if it's like 10 o'clock in the morning, you get like a call time of when they're going to come in and then you film for a few hours and then you might take a break and then film for a few more hours and take a break. But at retreat, cause there's so much going on and like all the camera crew is there, all the soundies are there, all the producers are there. It's just like 24 mm. seven. So like we'd never have our phone. Um, I had to like ask permission for my phone, which is ridiculous. Cause I had to call my child of course <laughs> um and so yeah it's it's really full on because there's so much going on and then if there's little chats happening here and there or someone's crying you can just see people like running around and like running chaos it's it's hectic that is so weird to think yeah. about did you ever see things happening then when you were just maybe well you weren't lounging by the pool because your weather wasn't as yeah. nice as this retreat but when you see producers or cameramen running towards like another group of people or, or a couple or something are you ever allowed to follow? Usually that like... couple was me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're Usually I was the one crying and like chasing after me. Um, but I, I mean, you kind of get used to it in a sense of like, there's always something going on. But I do feel like the experiment is such like a weird, I don't know, it's almost like a twilight zone where I saw, you know, one of Jack's comments where he's like, oh, stick to your own relationship. And it's almost like in this environment, you can't. Mm. Like you are with these people. You are literally trauma bonded in their relationship. You unpack all everything that's happening in their relationship together. So it's almost impossible to not be involved in other people's relationships, as well as you form really close bonds with them. So you do care about them and you want the best for them. And so it's really hard to not be involved. What was it like actually hanging out with the other cast members outside of dinner parties and commitment ceremonies? Because I can imagine you weren't allowed to see them. No, otherwise. we're never allowed. So we got in trouble. I didn't get in trouble because every weekend I would go home. For my child. <laughs> should we do like a drinking game of how much I actually say it? We should have made mimosas. Right? We should have. But um, yeah, I, I, they would always get in trouble because a lot of things that would happen off camera. So on the weekends, we don't film. And then when things happen off camera, production would be like how we meant to explain this to the mm. viewers. Like the Claire and Adam cheating scandal mm. that, that happened off camera. The butt dial happened off camera. So we would always get in trouble. So when I'm watching this and I'm hearing that like Sara went and hung out with her friends, I'm like, we were never allowed to do that. Or I see like all of their cute like photos and stuff with each other. You can tell they're at like the bar or something. I'm like we were never allowed to see each other outside yeah. of this ever. So it was really a different dynamic all being together. It was super fun. I mean, it didn't look like I had the best time, but <laughs> we, I actually did have a really great time on retreat because, um, yeah, you become really close with everyone. Yeah, it kind of looks like schoolies week for adults nearly in yeah. the sense of everyone's kind of chilling, drinking. How many days did it actually run for I when you were filming I think we were that? at retreat for three days. Okay. And is it like a party every night? You definitely, I mean, but that's a thing. Like they really monitor your alcohol content. Mm, okay. So that's one of the big questions I could ask. Like, oh, you know, how much can you drink? You see again, Sara asking like, can I have a glass of wine? Because they probably would have removed the wine at that point. Because if you're too drunk, they can't use your footage. So if you're slurring your words and you're really messy, they can't use that footage. Yeah, right. I slur after like one glass of wine. So I'd be high. <laughs> <laughs> and they used all of my footage. So thanks, Maps. <laughs> Was there a level, I guess, that they could tell, okay, let's just uh, had enough? I mean, I got cut off a lot, if that's okay. what you're asking. At the girls' night, they're like, you've been cut off. And so, like, Evelyn was just, like, sneaking me drinks. <laughs> so that was fun. But um, I think it's just, yeah, if you just look a little bit messy or if you look a little bit too drunk. But at dinner parties, we usually maybe only have, like, one carafe of, like, red wine 
rosé and white wine and that's it. You mentioned the differences between obviously the location. Yeah. One thing I noticed was that we saw Timothy and Lucinda allowed to just go on a date in Byron yeah, Bay. Yeah. We saw Tim and Sarah go to the beach. Yes. Were you allowed to no. have a separate couple time? We like, were never allowed to leave. Okay. Like we could not leave. Like they had to order us food in because like we didn't have any food. We didn't have any snacks. We had nothing. Like we brought snacks. Like I think there's a scene of me and Tony like running in and I'm carrying like a whole bunch of bags. Those bags were filled with snacks. Okay. Like I'm the <laughs> snack queen. I need to always have snacks at all moment of the time. But, um, yeah, we were never allowed to leave. So that must have been like a new production thing where they kind of set stuff up. But we were never allowed to leave. They're fully mixing it up this season. Like everything, the fourth wall is gone. They're allowed to just run free. Is the fourth wall gone though? Because I feel like I do see that in some of the Voxies where they do like the interviews of like you see a producer asking a question and then you just see someone like this. How do we know if that's real time? True, as in they've added the yeah. Product, we the don't know. We don't know if afterwards. you if you've heard oh, that yeah. actual like because you're watching it and you're like, oh, why are they just sitting there for five seconds? Yeah. Like when the producer's asking this, we don't know if that's real time. If they've added that in, if they slowed it down, like that was the other big thing that I picked up. The Franken biting is so obvious that if people don't know what Franken biting is, mm-hmm. basically it's where production can use parts of your conversation and stitch it together so if you close your eyes and you listen to a scene you can hear the inflection or the differences in the person's speech and you're like that wasn't said all at one time so Mm -hmm. it was very obvious to me I think maybe after being on it noticing the Franken biting but it's wild one thing I noticed from this week as well was when I think Sarah was having a conversation with Lauren and Timothy even just watching it back I don't think we really saw the words coming out of her mouth. Yes. It was a lot of the back of her head. Yes. And they pieced together yes. what she was saying. Yes. And I was watching that and you can kind of see her mouth moving, but it's yep. not matching the words. It doesn't words. line up. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, how do people believe that this is true? Like, it's wild. It's I was going to say, it feels like a lot of that in this season too, where you're seeing like footage play out and then yeah. the voiceovers over the top, but you've yes. never seen it kind yeah. of mm. in the real conversation. Mm-hmm. Do you think being at the retreat, you saw a different perspective of the couples compared to the dinner parties and the commitment ceremonies? Totally. I feel like a lot of people were a lot more relaxed. Like the retreat brought out a lot of good in people. For example, like um, Cam and Lyndall, Cam really thrives in that type of environment where he's like out with the boys. He's very like outdoorsy, like he's like, you know, Northern Territory kind of guy, like he liked to be outside. And so I feel like that really brought the best out of him rather than staying in Sky Suites for five days, seven days a Mm -hmm. week. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a really different dynamic to see how your partner interacts in a social aspect because at dinner parties, it's a little bit more contrived. It's a little bit more manufactured in a sense of you're just all sitting down and like having dinner. Whereas when you're at a retreat, there's like a soccer ball and there's like a tennis tournament and there's like all this other stuff going yeah. on where you can see like what they're really into and how they're going to act in like a social situation with you outside. That's a really good point. I think in this week we saw Timothy probably come out of his shell with other couples yeah. and other people and he seemed to bond with Sarah and Lauren. He became yeah. like one of the girls. Yeah, so I love like- that. He was so like into, it was almost like a save Tory moment of yeah. like, yeah. how can we do this? I see this happening. Um, he has been the dark horse for me, I think. Just seeing his vulnerability in this episode, I was like bawling my eyes out oh last God. night. Like I was like, oh my gosh, this is so yeah. just like next level. But just being in that pressure cooker environment, I feel like your emotions are so high that you could literally cry at the drop of a hat, not discounting his emotions, but it was just really nice to see him tap into that side of it. The other thing that I just kind of really felt for, you know, was seeing Timothy walk off and being really upset and then you see the next clip he's in the voxy and he's really upset so i could just imagine the production running after him and trying to coax him into being on camera because at that point in time you're just like i don't want to be around anyone Mm -hmm. i need to get out of this situation i need to be with my feelings and they're like can you get on camera i need you to get on camera can you get on camera and that's that's the thing that makes me feel really ick about the whole production side of things it's like he was probably still really in his emotions and he probably wasn't ready to speak to the producer about what he was going through. So bravo for him to to kind of pick up the pieces and do that. You could see the raw emotion in him and they would have just forced him into doing a voxy, which is ridiculous. How do you think they convince someone to open up about their feelings when oh, they've just had an emotional breakdown? They just, they do it all the time. Like you saw it happen to me quite a few times and they just, they chase after you. And one of the um, big tactics that I've learned now that producers are taught is real psychological 
ways of getting into the nitty gritty. So one, they act like your best friend. So you are really open and honest with them. And so when you're having like this emotional breakdown, they're the first ones to run after you. They're like, are you okay? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Like, do you want to talk about it? Like, you know, it might feel better if you talk about it a little bit. Like, do you need a break? Do you need some water? Can I get you anything? So they try to, I guess, calm you down before like, oh, maybe you should just, do you think you can do, you know, just a few minutes just to get your emotion out? Like, I feel like it's a really important part of your story. And then in your head, you're like, well, I think maybe it is good that I talk about it. And they're like, oh, you know, maybe you can connect with somebody about, you know, what you're going through or how you're feeling. Like think of the other people on the other side watching it. Like they really need to understand. And so you're already so broken as a person at this point. Like they've been in the experiment, what, six, seven weeks. So you're so shattered at this point, emotionally, mentally, physically, like it's taxing. Mm. And then you have to like just be thrown into the deep end. I'm actually really glad you brought that up because I think when I watched Timothy, I was like, oh, it's so commendable that he has come back on camera and been really vulnerable and shown Australia that side of him. Mm. But then with the context of when you're in that moment and you're so heightened and you have so many emotions, you're not really making rational decisions all the time either. you're definitely not. So bravo for him for being vulnerable. Like that's Mm. huge. And I love like his connection with Lucinda after that. Like you could just tell like that hug. I was like, oh, because he like goosebumps just like thinking about it. But it was just such like a raw connection for them to make. It's just, I hope they they didn't, you know, kind of play the... Or take him. advantage of yeah, him in that moment. Yeah, take advantage of yeah. him in that moment. That's exactly right. For sure. I think we're seeing that kind of vulnerable side of him, but then also the fun side as well. So yeah. it's been like a really good look into him. But then on the other hand, it nearly felt like when I was watching it anyway that Jack's mask slipped a bit in front mm. of the group with some of his comments yeah. and some of his behavior on retreat. Mm. I think it's weird that like Jack suddenly is starting to be to become really good friends with everyone and I think with your point about like Jack's mask slipping a little bit take off the mask is (laughs) (laughs) is he's trying to like be really buddy buddy with everyone and like buddy buddy with with Timothy and buddy buddy with um Tristan after everything that has been done and said and I'm just like why Mm. has he always been friends with Timothy like I just feel like he's really trying to make an effort again this is me watching thinking we see three percent of what's happening so I always kind of try to play devil's advocate when I'm watching it even though it's a very clear villain villains can be edited but there's still some things that it's kind of like you have to make your best judgment on yeah so let's have a look at the clip of what Jack had to say when we were at the pool yesterday you had the audacity to walk in and go, oh, what are the whales here today? Oh. oh. The music. It's a f- joke. It's not a joke. Girls, oh, is that Tristan. a joke? That's not a joke. When you say, here come the whales, whales insinuates fat. Jack, if you call me a whale, my God, it's not OK. It's not even funny to joke about. Jack, did you say that? I would never, I would never directly call anyone a whale. What? (laughs) And see, this is, again, devil's advocate, right? Like, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Like, was it shown him saying that or was that just not on camera? It was all off camera. Yeah, it was all... Regardless, calling anyone a name that insinuates any sort of body shaming is completely so disrespectful so disgusting coming from a personal trainer like mate you've just ruined your career 100 percent. and then obviously they've played a lot on Tristan's body you know issues that he had in the past and it's just you can see him physically want to like dissolve into the couch at that moment so it's just disgusting and again like obviously what we're seeing is like his like little smug face is that his real reaction? We don't know, but it just, it gives me the full ick. I think circling back to our conversation before too about when you're not seeing words come out of people's mouths yeah. and reactions in the moment may not always be the same thing that happened. Yeah. What I found interesting watching Jack in that moment is he doesn't seem to deny it at any point, but then he says, I would never directly say that to someone's face meaning you know it gives the it means like you're still gonna say it yeah Yeah. exactly so just because you're not directing it to anyone 
he's still saying it is already wrong. Yeah. So just don't say it. And he don't also say talks, it at all. He also talks about the context being removed from the situation too. So mm. it's like, oh, but, but that's out of context. It's like, what is the context? Yeah. But what is the context then? Was there like an inflatable whale? Yeah. Was there an actual like floaty of a whale? Because that would make sense. But there probably wasn't. So I think the whole thing is an ick. I think he said something really inappropriate at the wrong or right time doesn't matter what i what he said was absolutely inappropriate and it never should have been said it's interesting how he almost excused his behavior like he yes. said he wasn't directly saying it to anyone he He's said it was taken out of context but the way that he apologized to tristan at the dinner party was oh. by giving him a supplements voucher and that a key chain. made me want to throw up and then tristan being like oh my god thank you yeah. excuse me that is the worst slap in the face of, oh, I'll always be here for you. I'll help you. No, that's yeah. not how you apologize to somebody for body shaming them. It's absolutely disgusting behavior. Tristan is such a wonderful human being. So we both live in the Northern Beaches. I've caught up with Tristan a few times. And I will say he looks very like meek and humble. He is very humble, but he kind of looks like meek and soft on the show. He is like total alpha male, like super wow. confident alpha male, like... I feel like the show is showcasing a really soft side to him, which I really love, but they're also not showcasing like how confident and how really great Tristan is. So it's just, it's interesting what they play off of. Do you think he almost wanted to please Jack by accepting the apology or? I think he's just a good person. Okay. I honestly think he's just a good person and he probably thought of it as, oh, that is a really nice gesture. He probably didn't think of any malice behind it. But when you take the entire context, it's like, that's a slap in the face. And I almost feel like, I wonder if they're showcasing a lot of Tristan's body insecurities because they knew this comment was coming up. Mm. So they would have edited things before to kind of build up to this moment with Jack's comment. Yeah. But regardless, never should have been said. The apology was a complete slap in the face. And yeah, I was I was disgusted by that as well. Let's take a quick break and then we'll get into one of the more wholesome moments of the please, week. Please, please. So before we get into the dinner party, there was a major breakthrough with one of the more quiet couples this season, Ridge and Jade. Yes. Let's show you a clip. So I met uh, V, Jade's daughter this morning. This is a really important thing for me and Jade to make our relationship progress to the next level. V has to be a part of that. A lot riding on this because there's no Jade without V. Aww. If I said I wasn't nervous, I'd be lying to you. The last time I was that nervous is at the wedding day waiting for you at the <laughs> altar. But I felt very uh, honoured that you would put me in that position because I know it's not easy for you. I want her to feel comfortable. I want to feel safe and secure with me. And for her to when we made a daughter, must be doing something right. I have a lot of feelings about this. And I was processing my feelings last night when I was watching this. Do I think it's too soon? Potentially. Everyone's relationship evolves differently. Her daughter is also a lot older. So if I compare it to my child, he was a baby, right? Mm-hmm. He was two and a half. I think he had just turned three at that point. I was never in a position. I still am not in a position to ever introduce anyone to him until I feel like it is like concrete, it's real, I have no doubts. If they are in that position, that is absolutely wonderful and I love that for them. But when I watched that, I was like, too soon. Because if you remember on Bronte, on my season, um, Harrison introduced his son to Bronte. Yeah, true. And when I found that out, I was like, why would you do that? Because Harrison's son is younger as well. I won't speak like a lot on him, but... You know, I do know Jade's daughter is a little bit older, so she might be able to process things a little bit differently. Whereas if you have a very young child, Mm. drink. Do the producers ever bring it up with you? All the time. Yeah, okay. All the time. And I told them from day dot. I told Duncan from day dot, like, hey, just so you know, like you will not meet Leon Mm -hmm. ever on the show at least. It's interesting because it's only three months of your life, but it fast tracks so quickly that you do feel like you've been in a relationship with this person for like a year. But I just never felt, A, I never felt comfortable enough to introduce Duncan to Leon, which, thank God. And B, yeah, my it, Leon's just a little baby. I just want to protect him. Like, yeah. And if it's, I don't want to introduce him to a whole bunch of people and, you know, him get attached and then you break up and then you have to explain it. Whereas with an older child, I do feel like if you introduce them quite early on, it might actually be beneficial to the relationship okay. mm-hmm. because then they can kind of help navigate, you know, those feelings and those 
attachments and that kind of stuff as well. Yeah. So was it ever floated by producers in the sense of like, if you were calling your child or going to see him, were they ever like, oh, would you take Duncan yeah, along this weekend? Time. Right. All the time. Did you ever consider or get to the point thinking, okay, it would just be so much easier to combine my weekend with Duncan with my weekend with my child? Oh, of course it would be easier. Absolutely. It would be easier. And it would have been great. And like towards the end, I was really happy and really in love which is what you didn't really see. But, um, you know, I was having those feelings where I'm like, okay, what's the next step? How, you know, how is this going to look? Like, how am I able to introduce him? What is that going to look like? Like, how are we going to combine that? And that's why when I got really trolled for every other Wednesday and every other weekend, which is not my schedule, but thank you guys for being so good part of it. Yeah, it was just, it's really hard dating as a single parent because your time is limited. And until you feel comfortable enough where you can combine, you know, that family union and build a life together, you're going to have limited time. So, of course, that's always the end goal. But I just, my child is number one priority, child. And, yeah, I'll just protect him forever. It must be so frustrating. This is going to be off topic. But to be a single mom who's also living her life, you know, you don't just give up your life because you have a child. No. And you go on a show like this to find love. And you also have weekends where you you don't have the child and whatever, just being judged from every aspect because you might be going out and having fun (laughs) or like doing any, how do you deal with that stuff? Single moms go hard. Okay. (laughs) We are working our asses off. And if we have a free weekend, you better believe I will be on the wines, on the dance floor, living my best life. I love those comments of people being like, where's your child? And I'm like, my best clap back is it's really concerning that you're asking about my underage child. (laughs) Should I call the police? Like people are just so obsessed so with even mums that are in relationships and happily married. They should be allowed to have a day off, yeah. God forbid, and go out and live their own life. I mean, so, it just goes to show how misogynistic society still is. Yes. Just that, that a woman can't go out and have a few wines yes. and a dance without being like, where's your child? You should or a start few like, shots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tequila shots, whatever. <laughs> so we've touched a bit on producers and the pressures they may place on contestants to kind of do things they may not be ready for or may not want to do. So this week we saw Eden deal with a lot of anxiety around Mm. a secret she found out about Sarah she tells Jaden at some point and then it all kind of starts the whole dinner party drama I was kind of curious watching it and watching Eden struggle with the telling Jaden and then telling Sarah and what to do with the situation and this like bombshell she was sitting on when I was watching Eden tell Jaden at the retreat it didn't come across as this was like the first time they'd ever spoken about this conversation. So I wanted to ask you if producers have ever made you like act out a scene that's already happened behind closed doors. Yeah. I mean, obviously when you're with your partner 24 seven, there's going to be things that happen that production might learn a bit later on and be like, oh, you know, can you talk about this? We need to bring context to this. For example, the butt dial, right? Yeah. So the butt dial happened off camera. Do we know if it ever happened? <laughs> well, now we do know that it didn't happen, so that's fine. And so there is a lot of pressure. I want to talk about two things. One about them saying, you know, can you talk about this on camera? We need a bit of context. Absolutely, that happens. Um, there's a few times where they would have us. So when we're filming, Like, let's say we're filming in our apartment. There's only one cameraman. So you'll have one camera guy, like, in a really deep conversation. But then you're going to have to do, like, your reactions to what they just said. So we call them naughties. So let's say, for example, you and I are talking. We're in, like, this deep conversation. And I'm telling you something. They'll be like, okay, stop there. We need to get your naughties. And then they'll, like, turn the camera around. And then I have to, like act out what you were just telling me again so a lot of the reactions that you see are pretty much fabricated because there's only one cameraman and so in order for them to get both reactions they have to move around so yes that did happen quite a lot um the second thing I want to touch on is she oh my god my heart broke for her so much you could tell she was like trembling she was shaking she was just not herself And the fact when the producer brought her into the bathroom and she was just like, I just, I can't do this. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, she's having a full panic attack, it seemed to me. And they probably would have pressured her to be like, bring it up at the dinner party. Mm. Pull her aside. Instead of, I think she did do it the right way rather than in front of everyone. But she was absolutely pressured into bringing it up and saying it. Do I think she did the right thing? Absolutely. But 
the whole way around it was just an ick for me. I think it kind of reminded me of, so Claire wanted to initially tell Jesse before the actual, so I think she told him at the wedding, at Taylor's wedding, and she wanted to tell Jesse way before that and producers made her wait until a great moment. So there's a yeah, lot of right. contriving behind the scenes of wanting it to be like the best moment, but also the most explosive for TV. You mentioned there was the scene where Eden was having her breakdown mm. behind closed doors, talking yeah. to producers. It was very vulnerable. You would yes. assume that she wasn't mic'd up or she didn't oh, at least. Oh, we are always mic'd up. Well, let's get into that because I assume that she didn't think that that would air. But are you under the assumption that anything you say while it's being filmed or while there are cameras nearby will show? I think you forget. And I think a lot of the times, like, because there was a lot of the times where I stormed off camera as well and was having, like, a Menti B probably a hundred times. And you really are like, I don't want to be filmed anymore. Like, perfect example, when Timothy ran off. Perfect example, when Tim ran off. Or, wait, is there a Timothy and a Tim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Oh, right. I was like, wait, is that right? (laughs) So, yeah, you can tell that they both run off. Yeah, definitely. There's been rumors that Eden and Jaden were becoming too boring for the show and this is why they've gotten involved in this storyline because they would be kicked off. I call that bullshit. Yeah. A, they're not ever going to kick you off for anything. I don't think producers really care if you're boring or if you're not boring. I also don't think Eden and Jaden are here for clout or that their relationship is fake i've seen a few things going around about like this pact that they have i've met them both in real life and they were really lovely so either they're really great actors or they're really good people i feel like i have a pretty good judge of character so please don't prove me wrong (laughs) but they seemed really happy and really in love and this is while you know filming was airing uh, while they were filming and i think it's bullshit so there's so much drama that happens that they couldn't create storylines. Yeah. Mm. Of course, they can stitch things together and ask you certain questions to guide you down a certain way. But literally, if maths turned into Big Brother and it was ran 24-7, I promise you it would be way yeah. more explosive and dynamic and dramatic than they could ever create. So maybe that's what they should start doing. <laughs> I, was I say would say that. Then it would be idea. real as well yeah. rather than fake shit that's all like stitched together and doesn't make sense and villains are created like you would see completely different maths if, if that happened we need that channel nine make please, that happen please. let's have a quick break and then we can go through how this unfolded at the dinner party cool so at the dinner party eden and Jaden pull sarah and tim aside mm. and basically get her to admit that she had hung out with her ex the weekend before yeah very messy basically a lot of people storm off and then she comes back to the dinner table and has a big speech to the group here's what she had to say yes i went out with my ex on the weekend we had a few drinks together yes i did ask eden for something to wear yes i wanted to look good for my ex he's dating someone he's been dating someone for six years so are you sorry so are you I know that, but I didn't do anything with my ex. All I did was have drinks. What we're actually seeing here is Sarah's fight style, which is when you bring an issue up, she gets defensive and quite combative. She wrote shush. Why did you tell me to shh? Because I, like, I didn't want to tell Tim that because I didn't want him to get insecure. Oh, Sarah. Is it Sarah or Sarah? I feel bad. She said herself... She was Sarah, but everyone's been referring to her as Sarah. So it switched a few times on the show. It does look really bad. The thing that I don't like about this is that everyone was all it was just insinuating that she had slept with him. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, so first of all, you're slut shaming her by saying just because a girl catches up with her ex boyfriend, which of course she shouldn't have done, but don't jump down her throat saying you've slept with him. Like, sorry, that's I wasn't about that. Everyone was going off at her, which I really felt for her. You could just see in her body language that she was like, get me the F out of here. Yeah. She she was almost like, no matter what I say, nobody's going to say anything. Look, I don't like that she lied. I feel like that was almost worse than the actual action. It's just the lying and the deceit, which is worse than actually just, even if you did just go catch up with your ex for a drink, you should have just been honest. Don't try to blame Tim by saying, oh, it was going to make him insecure. That has nothing to do with him. 
if you knew that it was the wrong thing to do, you knew it was, it was the wrong thing to do. Also, how did she go and hang out with her friends? Like, <laughs> you're like, I wasn't allowed to do that. Any of this. But look, I do praise Eden for, you know, calling it out. She probably sat on that for a while and been like, I really need to, you know, come out with this and tell everyone about this. <sighs> At the dinner party, probably not the best time. Mm. But again, it's almost like you have to do things at certain times because you're not allowed to see anybody in any other time. Mm. Yeah. So that's always why dinner parties are so explosive because that's the only time that we really get to see everyone. I just, I really, I feel for her because after that scene is when she was, she stormed out and you can see her talking to a producer and she's like, I want to leave. I want to leave. Get me out of here now. Mm. Because you don't understand. We can't just leave. I see all the people in the comments all this time. They're like, they can't hold you against their will. They have your phone. They have your, they have everything, okay? So when you first go into the warehouse, they take your phone off you. They take everything off you. What is she meant to do? Walk down the street and hail a cab with no money, no nothing? Like, she, we're lit, we literally can't leave. So all the people that are like, they're holding you against their will, they are. Um, but I did really feel for her. It's not great. But again, I feel like I, there's more to the story that I need to know. There's I think something so missing. There's Something's something missing. missing. I thought that when I was watching it too, because as I was watching it unfold, and I think you touched on this, it's the dishonesty around the situation. But yeah. when Jaden even comes in and he comes in quite strong. Yes. Where he's like, it's cheating. This is X, Y, Z. I was like, you're not the one that defines cheating in this situation yeah. when you actually don't know what went down. That's exactly right. Oh, on that though, if I found out that my partner was catching up with their ex, I would consider that cheating. Mm. Definitely. Okay. But it's the deceit. It's the deceit that's cheating. It's not the physical attachment or like the the way that i saw my ex in real life it's not even about that it's literally about the lie the and the deceit exactly so i feel like that's more of like the cheating part um but yeah she really that was bad it was like i was like i was ready to just let it all go because i was like there's something else we need to hear her yeah. side of the story but then when she kind of came back came back and it seemed like she maybe stumbled on one of her own mm. lies and i know under pressure you just kind of say things to smooth things over but I think it was the moment where she told Eden and Jaden that. Oh, the dog sitting. There was a dog sitting. And then there was also her ex has been with his partner for six years. Oh, yeah. And then that back at the bad. table. And then she's like, oh, we did sleep together. And he's like, well, they were together for six years. And she's like, well, they broke up. And I'm like, oh, stop. I know. Stop. I was like, no. Just walk out. Please just leave. Just walk <laughs> yeah. out. So look, it went, it definitely went from bad to worse. And as it was unfolding, it got even worse. But again, like, guys, if you have an opinion on her, I'm talking to you guys. Don't message her. Tell yeah. your best friend. Yeah. Don't send terrible things to her saying that she should kill herself. She probably, like, she knows she did the wrong thing. Don't send it to her, okay? Just keep your comments to yourself. It was clear that they cut out so much context. Yes. Obviously, with the whole situation. Yeah. But even when Sarah was first explaining things to Tim, yeah. they were muffling her voice and then showing flashbacks to kind of yeah. villainize her even and more. And I was, like, trying to listen. Yeah. Or even when it was, like, you know, and it was, like, like the like white noise and yeah. Like, yeah. It, like zoomed in on Eden's face. I'm like, wait, Literally. like I'm trying to listen to like what you guys are like zooming out. Like, can you put captions on or yeah. something? But they were clearly trying to show, okay, Tim is feeling like terrible right now. He's the victim in this whole thing, yeah. which he was because he was betrayed, obviously. Yeah. But by not showing at least Sarah's side and explanation. And from what I understand, the context was that she moved to Australia, met her partner early on when she had moved in Australia and all of their friends were formed in that relationship. Oh, see, I didn't know this. So then once they broke up, all of her friends were still connected to him. He has now mm. moved to Perth. He's got a girlfriend of six years. The messy thing is that they did sleep together one month before the relationship. That aside, she essentially was meeting up with her friends and he, who is also she friends with her friends, She would have known that he would together. have been there, though. Well, that's the thing. She did want to dress up to impress her ex. That was another thing that was going on. Oh, villainized. I want to talk about that. But what girl hasn't done uh, that's that? That's what I mean. Exactly. That's what, what girl has If I'm going to see good. my ex, I'm going to be like, hell yeah, I'm going to look good. I would like, rather look good when the... I see my ex, not be like dressed in trackies. But like... not with the intention of like sleeping with exactly. him or having no, any right. sort of relationship with him. It's just of like, hey... Like, yeah. look at what you missed out on kind of thing. So I feel like that could be a little bit misconstrued in a way. The shushing emoji was probably like, hey, keep this on the DL. Yeah. Probably not great. I think the way that she could have fixed it is just told Tim. But again, were they in a good enough place for her to be like, hey, by the way, I know we're not great right now, but I'm going to see my ex. He would have been like, what the F? No. And she would have mm. been like, well, I'm going anyway. So that would have already caused a fight as well. 
So it was just the whole thing was a mess. And the whole way it played out, it was just, I feel for her. I know. I know I'm going to get trolled for that. But I really, look, I do feel really bad for Tim as well. Because obviously, like, he is the victim. Like you said, he was absolutely betrayed. But I also do feel for her because the music that they use and the way that they produced things it's making her look really terrible well it felt like they cemented her spot as a villain in that moment with the flashbacks the editing like the optics of everything that's happened and then adding it all together like her not doing the phone challenge yes all this stuff came back through that's a bit of a reach yeah but is it yeah show us (laughs) around (laughs) s do you think that she and tim can come back from this no uh, that's it now. I'd be if they came back from this. Why? Yeah. For what? But wait, did she say that she was still? She said she's not interested in her ex, right? Exactly. So does he believe her, or do oh, they? I don't just know. Look, I think. Clean? I think. I'm not the kind of person where I'll give you a second chance. Like for me, it's if you have effed up that on that big of a scale. And again, it's not the fact that she went and met up with her ex. It's the fact that she lied about it. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. it's like, so what? Yeah. Else, this early on in a relationship, what am I? how am I ever going to trust you? Like that trust is now broken. Why, why would I want to continue on? But again, like in this experiment, it's almost like, oh, should we actually try? Like, so I don't know. In this situation too, if you were the Eden in this situation, Mm. bringing it to the dinner party, do you think it would have been better as, like what kind of freedom do you have to even text people when you're- That's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. So- Obviously, they got it out of Eden that she was feeling some tor- some type of way. Mm. They would have... It's like interrogation. They would have been like, what's going on? You're not feeling great. What's happening? Your emotions are so high. She probably would have started crying. Mm. And then she probably would have been like, oh, yeah, I know something, which is what we saw at retreat, right? And so they probably were like, hey, you need to speak to Jaden about this on camera, which we could tell that like he had already known. She even said that as soon as Sara texted her that Jaden was there, right? So we already no. knew that he knew. They would have said, you need to bring this up at the dinner party. Mm. And then it's almost kind of like, it's not like a teacher being like, it's, you almost obey them. It's like, you're so brainwashed in this experiment, especially seven weeks in, you're so mentally deteriorated that you're just like, okay, when am I ever going to do it again? And then they'll be like, oh, well, you know, it's good for the storyline. Like, you know, you're going to look like a hero. You're going to look like, you know, this has happened to you. And see how they always kept bringing that up about each other. Well, it did happen to me. So that was another tactic that producers would have used to kind of force her to bring it up at that point of, but how did you feel when that happened to you? You wouldn't want a friend to do that to you, right? Mm. Do you even speak to your friends anymore that didn't tell you? So she would have been like, yeah, you're right. I'm going to tell her. And this is my only opportunity to do it. This is your only opportunity, guys. You had retreat. You didn't do it then. So why don't you do it now? When else are you going to have? So you've got to think of like all of the pressure behind it. Again, she did the right thing. I feel bad for Tim. But I still feel bad for Sarah. As someone that was edited as a villain, Mm. what would your advice be for people that were edited as villains coming off the show? Go rogue. (laughs) On Yahoo. (laughs) (laughs) Um, look, I think obviously own up to your truth. Uh, A lot of times people are like, you took no accountability. And I'm like, guys, if you watch anything I say, I will say, did I say the wrong thing a million times? Absolutely. Yes. Did I act like a head? Absolutely. Yes. Um, I'm not perfect. Uh, there's a lot of things I really wish I had done and had said that I had done differently or articulated myself differently. Go to a lot of therapy. <laughs> That's another th- comment that I love getting is that you need help. Girl, everyone needs help. I have been to therapy for 20 years. It's probably what saved my life coming out of this experience. Get a really good therapist. Do not get the therapist that they try to give you. Find your own therapist and just um, ride the wave, I guess. It's hard and it's really dark. Get a really good support system around you. I'm always here for you as well. (laughs) Um, But you'll come through on the other end. And as long as you're honest and as long as you're an actual good person, I think people will start to see that. That ties into what would you like fans to keep in mind when they're watching all this drama play out? Man, I wish that there was a disclaimer. So I've done a lot of work with the You Can Foundation. Um, It was created by Nick Thompson, who was on Love is Blind. And he is basically creating a really safe space for reality contributors, is what they call this, reality contestants, um, to do like um, 
therapy and support and all that kind of stuff. So he always talks about a disclaimer being added to reality TV of this is edited, this is produced. Um, you see, you know, 3% of what has actually happened. Keep your opinions to yourself. You can go on, like, comment, whatever, but don't send it to that person. Yeah. What is your intention? And whenever I have somebody that trolls me, I'm like, okay, so you've looked me up, typed out this terrible message, and then hit send. Like, what was your intent? To hurt me? Like, why? There's so much hurt and hate already in this world. Let's just stop the trolling. Call your mom. And call your best friend and call whoever. Talk to your dog about how much you hate this person on the TV. Don't send it directly to the person because you have no idea what state mentally that person is on the other end. And that one comment could go really, really horribly. Mm -hmm. So just remember, it's for entertainment. These people, like, once you get to know them after their socials, which I love. Like, I can't wait for this cast to get their socials back so we can know, like, all of the tea um but yeah just be kind it takes nothing to be kind just yeah just be and like just turn your tv off put your phone down watch the episode enjoy it and then just be done for entertainment like oh it's almost like coming back as a viewer again and i'm watching it i'm like oh my god this really is entertaining i want to hate it but again it's like oh wait that's frankenbiting oh that's edited oh like never would i ever message that person and be like i hate you yeah yeah (laughs) like what so just be kind be humble have an open mind and just know that what you're saying isn't 100 percent true well said well said we're gonna go into the the last last segment oh god games so we have a game called kiss marry leave with this year's contestants okay who would you kiss i would probably kiss cassandra Mixing it up a bit. Yeah. And then I would probably marry Tristan. So I get it. <laughs> we can be in a throuple. It's all right. I'm Mormon. It's fine. It's totally normal. And I would leave half of them in the bin. <laughs> I would leave. I would probably obviously leave Jack. We also have an honesty box question for you Kay. to answer. Love an honesty box. So Bring it back. Oh, do I just? Oh, there's only one. Only one. <laughs> Stitch we can up. have more if you need. <laughs> People go on maths because they want help finding love. Now that you've been on the show, what learnings did you take away from the experiment that will help your next relationship? Don't get married at first sight. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's actually a really good question. Um, I learned a lot about myself. That was the first time that I'd really been in a relationship after being a single mother. So I think at that point, I didn't really know what my expectations were or what my boundaries were or almost like what I was worth like I knew that I needed attention (laughs) don't we all (laughs) don't we all I knew that I wanted to feel like a priority I think is that's what boiled down to um I wanted a priority I wanted somebody to love me for me the good the bad the ugly I really need somebody that can be there for me when I have anxiety um it's a really big ask dating somebody that has a mental illness such as anxiety because if you're having a panic attack sometimes people don't really know what to do but if they're open and curious into learning how they can help you and navigate through that I think it's really important um honesty obviously is a big one it's hard because being on maths you don't know if the person that is going on maths as well is there for the right reasons Mm -hmm. you just kind of have to feel it in your gut and I think boiling it all down to that last one is just listening to my gut and listening to my instincts um I feel like I have a pretty good judge of character and sometimes that can get a little bit fuzzy and so yeah just listening to my gut and knowing that I'm worth a lot more than what was shown for sure have you dated much since your maths experience (laughs) I was dating I was actually dating one of Ridge's friends Really? For a short time. One of the ones that said Dece on the show? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. Can we cancel that word? He was on another reality TV show. Oh, okay. okay. And did he ever say the word Dece to you no, in conversation? No, he's okay. He's a really great guy, but the, yeah, things just didn't pan out right. Is there a preference to date someone that's been on reality TV now or in the public eye? Oh, I don't know, man. Like, I just, I feel like I've only now just gotten back to a really healthy place in myself of actually being excited to date and being open to date it's taken me a long time to get there um but I feel like if it is somebody in the public eye they'll kind of understand like the articles that come out and you know I'm 
so I've, I'm seen with one person and a photo is taken and all of a sudden like we're getting married and having kids so it's really hard to kind of navigate through that but also it is kind of nice to have somebody that's a little bit naive that's never watched maths before yeah, yeah. that doesn't have like that preconceived judgment um so I don't know I don't know watch this space hopefully I'm single <laughs> very very single <laughs> <laughs> and would you ever do a reality show again you know what I would as, as bad as that sounds, it's like a toxic relationship that I'm addicted to. Yeah. And I totally would. I would definitely do something a bit... I would carry myself a little bit differently. Um, I've gone through a lot more therapy and I would continue to go through more therapy to kind of navigate through that. Probably not a love one again. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, I think we need an Australia Love is Blind series. Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> the Love is Blind is worth the, worse than math, so I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Mm-hmm. I would do like Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. Mm. I feel like I'd be very entertaining because I literally gag at a jelly bean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or like a baking show would die to yeah. be on oh, any yeah. sort of like baking show. Sign me up, please. Um, yeah, but I would definitely do it again. I mean, you're on... Was it Judge Judy? Judge Judy. I was on Judge Judy. That's essentially reality TV. So when people ask, like when I'm on an app, right, like a dating app, they're like, how do I know you? Because now I have brown (laughs) hair. And I was like, oh, it's on Judge Judy. And they're like, what? (laughs) 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 I'm like, it does not count. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, guys. It was so fun. Earlier this week, we had a tell-all interview with Ben Walters from this year's season of Maths. Make sure you check it out if you haven't already because he spilled plenty of tea. So to end this episode, we've got his full song that he wrote for Ellie to play you out with. Enjoy. Maybe I'm not where you want me to be In terms of Behind the Edit is brought to you by Yahoo Australia, hosted by Lachlan Gurdon and Talia Pritchard. Produced by Katie Brown. Social production by Alexa Tubatini. Yahoo Australia would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast was recorded, and pay our respects to elders past and present.